Government signs secondary school Kankara to be rescued soon, Defence Minister assures. Some of them are in the search and they are coming out from the woods. I don't know the number, but certainly, by the grace of God, there will not be anybody found dead unless by accident. Mambila Hydroelectric Power Project to engage 20,000 Nigerians. Around the project, they will be given first priority. Nigeria records 418 new COVID-19 infections. And on Good Morning Nigeria today, we shall discuss state government's plan to borrow from pension funds. <clears throat> the 36 state governors recently took a decision at the 22nd teleconference meeting of the Nigerian Governors Forum to borrow 2 trillion naira after more than out of more than 11 trillion naira said to be the cumulative balance in the account of the National Pension Fund. Now, while some reports had indicated that the states were planning to borrow 17 trillion naira from the Pension Fund for Infrastructural Development, Chairman of the Nigerian Governors Forum, Dr. Kaede Fayemi, has been quick to uh, point out that the National Pension Fund does not have up to 17 trillion naira, and as such, the state's government could not possibly then be borrowing that amount where it didn't exist. In fact, figures from the National Pension Commission indicate that the total funds under the scheme stood at 11.56 trillion naira as at the end of September this year, and that a portion of it had already gone into federal government bonds and securities. And now, but like the saying goes, there is no smoke without fire. Because much earlier in the year, Kaduna State Governor Malam Nasi Arufai, as chairman of a subcommittee of the National Economic Council, explained that the decision to borrow two trillion naira from the pension fund was in compliance with the Pension Reforms Act 2004, which, according to him, empowers the government to borrow 20% of the fund to address national issues. Now, there is already a lot of hue and cry over the proposal by states to uh, borrow from the pension funds. As analysts are arguing that while the National Pension Commission is empowered by the Act to borrow to fulfill its obligations, there is no, there is no direct stipulation, as it were, for borrowing uh, by states from the pension funds. Now, others say that the Act, that is the Pension Reform Act, only provides for investment of pension funds in viable uh, investment uh, options, such as bonds. And these persons have expressed concerns over the viability of state governments who are struggling to pay salaries to make the requisite repayment if indeed they get to borrow from the pension funds. You know, moreover, Kisley, most state governments have not yet keyed into the contributory pension scheme as they are unable to fulfill counterpart obligations and are therefore unable to benefit from pension funds by raising bonds. Well, you're right, uh, Jubai. Now, there are also rigid conditions, as it were, to be fulfilled by states, even if they were to access the funds through bonds. And those conditions, of course, include enacting a contributory pension law in the first instance, and then being up to date with their counterpart funding. But data from the National Pension Commission indicates that as of September again this year, only about five states were administering pension to retirees under the contributory pension scheme, even though 25 states had already enacted laws on the scheme. So what is the legality of borrowing from the pension funds and what are the implications for all key players? Pertinent question there you have raised. Of course, we also have to look at the capacity mm -hmm. of the borrowers to repay timelessly so that the rights of pensioners and their interests are not ultimately impacted. That's our focus in our conversation segment on this edition of Good Morning Nigeria. I would like to welcome you to the program. As always, we are broadcasting live on the network service of the Nigerian Television Authority, and we are here in our Abuja headquarters studios. I'm Kingsley Osadolo. And I am Jumo Yusuf, joining Kisley to appreciate your time with us this morning. As usual, we shall bring you other complimentary segments in the course of the program. But first, let's begin with the highlights of the morning news with Nolin Abel Ame. Good morning, Nolin. 
Good morning, Jumai. Good morning, Kinsley. And good morning, Nigeria. Here is the news. Minister of Defense and leader of the federal government delegation to Katsina, Major General Bashir Salihi Magashi, retired, has assured that government is doing everything possible to rescue the kidnapped students of Government Science Secondary School, Kankara, without any collateral damage to the people of the state. Speaking to correspondent Awal Haliru after an assessment visit to the affected school in Kankara. Most of them, clearly they went into the bush out of fear. And uh, gradually they are getting them out. Some of them are being searched and they are coming out from the woods. I don't know the number, but certainly by the grace of God, there will not be anybody found dead unless by accident. President Muhammadu Buhari has commended officers and soldiers of Guards Brigade for the high level of discipline and professionalism exhibited in the year 2020. The president, represented by his chief of staff, Professor Ibrahim Gambari, gave the commendation at the Guards Brigade 2020 West Africa Social Activity in Wasa. Yeah, in ensuring that the federal capital territory remains peaceful in addition to their enormous responsibility of safeguarding Mr. President, the first family, and the conduct of ceremonial duty. The Air Task Force of Operation Lafia Dole has recorded more successes in its air campaign against Boko Haram terrorists in the northeast of the country. The Coordinator, Directorate of Defense Media Operations, Major General John Enenche, says the latest was achieved through air strikes at Njimia on the fringes of the Sambisa Forest in Borno State. Nigerian Air Force fighter jets and helicopter gunships engaged the location, resulting in the neutralization of several Boko Haram targets with damage to their structures after a series of aerial surveillance missions showed up upsurge of activities in the settlement. 418 new COVID-19 infections have been recorded in Nigeria within 24 hours. The Nigeria Center for Disease Control says the new infections were discovered in 16 states and the FCT, bringing the total number of confirmed COVID-19 cases in Nigeria to 73,175. Lagos has 113 of the new cases, 86 are in FCT, 47 in Abia, 39 in Kaduna, 27 in Rivers, and 22 in Katsina. Benue has 14 new cases, 13 in Oyo, 12 in Kano, 8 in Enugu, 7 each in Edo and Imo states, 6 each in Bauchi, Eboi, and Ogun states, 4 in Ondo, and 1 case in Nasara. Lagos leads on the state's chart with 24,952 COVID-19 cases, followed by FCT with 8,424 cases, while Plateau trails with 3,997 cases. Active cases nationwide have increased to 5,888 with 6,090 recovered patients discharged, while the death toll has risen to 1,197. Chairman of the Presidential Task Force on COVID-19 and a Secretary to the Government of the Federation, Boss Mustafa, has revealed that some members of his household have tested positive to COVID-19. The SGF, in a statement, however, notes that himself and his wife tested negative. But he will remain in self-isolation and work from home according to protocols by the health authorities. The PTF chairman says his family members who are positive are currently asymptomatic but have been isolated and are receiving care in one of the government treatment centers. He advises Nigerians to adhere to all public health and safety measures in order to safeguard the gains 
made in the fight against COVID-19. The SGF uh, remind, remind, reminded that uh, COVID-19 is real and that I increase in cases being reported across several states by the Nigeria Center for Disease Control, NCDC, should compel citizens to take personal responsibility to protect themselves and the nation. Power Minister Power Minister flags off a training for Mambila project. The federal government is training 20,000 20, youths in various skills, participate fully in the Mambila hydroelectric power project. The National Power Training Institute of Nigeria, NAPTIN, is facilitating the training under the local content development initiative. With your kind support, the ESET program will succeed and will empower our teaming youth with skills to be self-reliant and potential entrepreneurs. The youth that are around the project, they will be given first priority to be employed under the semi-skill that is going to, you know, be required. That's the morning news for now. The program continues with Kinsley and Jumai after this break. I am Nolin Ebel Ame. Good morning. A scorecard like no other. Government has put in place measures and initiatives principally targeted at youths, women, and the most vulnerable groups in our society. These included broad plan to lift 100 million Nigerians out of poverty in the next 10 years, the creation of 75 billion Naira National Youth Investment Fund to provide opportunities for the youths and the micro, small and medium enterprises survivor fund, through which government is A, paying three-month salaries of the staff of 100,000 micro, small, and medium enterprises. B, paying for the registration of 250,000 businesses at the Corporate Affairs Commission. C, giving a grant of 30,000 Naira to 100,000 artisans and guaranteeing market for the product of traders. These are in addition to many other initiatives such as farmer money, trader money, market money, and power, and tech, and and agro. These and more in spite of a recession and a global pandemic. Although social media as a channel of communication is inherently harmless, it becomes harmful and damaging when used without discretion and thoughtfulness. Bad social media users spread rumors and fake news without verification. But good social media users stop, reflect, and verify information before sharing it. Be a good social media user. Stop the spread of fake news. Verify the authenticity of your source and use social media responsibly for a better Nigeria. This message is brought to you by the Nigerian Television Authority, NTA, in collaboration with the National Orientation Agency. The Council of Our Fathers. My advice to these young people is please uh, do not take us back to those harrowing days. You probably do not know what it is. Nigerian youths. Let's build our nation together. You clean your teeth every morning, but that fresh breath feeling just doesn't last. The answer? Easy. You keep your teeth strong and healthy and give your mouth long-lasting fresh breath with new Oral-B 2-in-1 toothpaste. It helps strengthen your teeth and gives you long-lasting fresh breath. So fresh, still fresh. And still fresh. Stay strong, stay fresh. New Oral B toothpaste for strong teeth and long lasting fresh breath. Life can be very eventful. We curiously expect things to happen even when we don't know what. 
Our human nature makes us like and repost lots of information. Some are unverified, inciting anger and hate. Sometimes innocently, other times the urge to break it first. This, in most cases, has caused destruction in many nations. Watching Good Morning Nigeria on the network service of the Nigerian Television Authority. Let's now join our correspondent, Chimobi Walter Naji, for some business stories. The federal government has called for improved participation from government and non governmental agencies in making use of the Federal Government Development Assistance Database Portal to enhance the Open Government Partnership Initiative of the government. This was the fallout of this one-day interactive forum with development partners and donor agencies in its quest to ensure the local and international partners are carried along with government's effort at ensuring the Nigerian economy remains strong and open to local and foreign investors. In order to ensure that the inflows of ODA impact positively on the life of the citizen, its continuation, utilization, monitoring and evaluation shall be done by a single government agency, Federal Ministry of Finance, Budget and National Planning. Supporting internally displaced persons in the Northeast is one of the major focus of this year's annual interactive session as the economy of the area have been ravaged by the insurgency and banditry plaguing the area. With Business News, I'm Chimubi Walter Naji. Many thanks to Mobi for the business package. Next on the program is Newspaper Review. Super Revere, Bayer Tebe is with us in the studios. Bayer, good morning and welcome. Thank you, Kinsley. Good morning. Good morning, Good morning, good morning, good morning Nigeria. All right, uh, let's begin by taking a look at uh, the front page of the Daily Trust newspaper. Daily Trust, uh, below the name plate, says economy faces threat as states mall another COVID-19 lockdown. Economy faces threat as states mall another COVID-19 lockdown. That's page 18. APC crisis. Real reasons ex-vice chair was expelled. 18 army generals contract coronavirus. That's page six. And the big story from the weekend says casino abduction. That's the key card. Six, six, eight students still missing. School register shows. Three riders. Rescue our children, but don't use force. Parents beg government. Protests as federal government's delegation visits Kankara. Uh, the boys will be freed soon. That's according to the defense minister. And you can see the photographs there on the front page of the paper. It says parents gathered during a meeting at the government science school in Kankara yesterday after gunmen abducted students from the school in Kasina State on Friday night. Second list story says as new fuel price regime begins today, Uncertainty trails deregulation and subsidy removal. Five Naira court means subsidy, say marketers and experts. And at the foot of the front page, how ministry staff awarded 145 million Naira contract to self. And that's according to the Senate. That's the Public Accounts Committee of the Senate reviewing the Auditor General's report for 2015. Finally, Kanu Man, who is age 23, marries 46-year-old American sweetheart, <coughs> twice his age. That's page three. <coughs> Millennium City, inside Kaduna's emerging real estate hub. That's a special feature, page 22. Jumai? Indeed, Kinsley. Now let's go to the leadership newspaper. 
as the pen profession mourns Sam Inda Azaya, 1962 to 2020. Death has robbed us. North Central People's Forum mourns. With riders say we will miss his doggedness, wise counsel. He was a detribalized Nigeria. That's coming from Bedlo Masari. He stood for an indivisible Nigeria, attributed to Muhammad. It's a big blow to media industry. That's coming from Hope Uzodima. He was an epitome of hard work from the minister of uh, FCT. He was very supportive, Bogoro. He was our friend and colleague, Enpan. He was an exceptional personality, Muslim group. And I have lost a compatriot coming from Buba Galadima. And um, just below the picture story of Sam Inda Zaya, service chief Tom Kazina in search of missing students with Ryder, 30, 333 school children missing. That's coming from the state governor, Belo Masari. We will rescue them soon, FG assures. Troops kill 20 terrorists, recover weapons in Borno. At the bottom plate of the leadership newspaper, Electoral College decides Trump Biden's fate today. Police FRSC begin deployment for crime accident-free Christmas. Elumelu suggests way to bridge digital divide in developing countries. National Assembly to pass 2021 budget this week. SMM, SMEs contribute 75% of national employment, NEPC, and second wave of COVID-19 hits Quara. Bio, that's quite alarming. Yes, uh, but let's start with the, the, the story that has shocked the nation. nation. That is the uh, abduction of students of Government Science Secondary School, Kankara. The military has now located the bandits who abducted the students and they are said to be in Zango Kaura Forest. Following the pre president's charge to the army and the police to go after them, a uh, latest report indicates that the security agencies are engaging the bandits. Bandits on motorcycle first raided Kankara town and then later in the evening at about 9.30 ended up of the government science secondary school Kankara. The police at the place engaged them. And it was from that exchange of fire that many of the students run, scampered over uh, perimeter fences to safety. In the ensuing uh, exchange, one bandit was killed. A, a policeman was unfortunately also injured. Now, the governor of Kassina, uh, Amino Masari says, of the 839 population of the student, 333 are not accounted for. Uh, Lely Trust is reporting 668. The police also is saying that 200 has been rescued. Some students who hid in the bush have started to return. Governor Masari has says that government is trying to contact the parents because some of the students, after running out of the campus, went straight home. So they are trying to trace and find out whether some of them actually went back home. Meanwhile, all schools in Casino State have been ordered to be closed. Parents went on demonstration yesterday uh, and uh, chanting, please bring back our boys. The police high command has also deployed assistance in the operational and investigative asset to Kankara. The Air Force is supporting the army and uh, with the soldiers and the police who are on the ground going after the bandits. Federal government delegation led by the Minister of Defense was also in Kasina and Kankara. Uh, Defense Minister Major General Bashir, Bashir Magashi retired says bandits should be declared as terrorists. And if you are declared a terrorist, then you don't have much of rights. I think the instances of armed robbery, banditry, terror, uh, insurgency, and terrorism have reached such an alarming state that even the National Assembly ought to make a pronouncement about a, a dire situation of security. And if, like the Minister of Defense says, if there is a state of declaring bandits as terrorists, which means that you don't have your right, and in such critical situation, there should be a state of emergency as of regards security, not the, time, the kind that saw uh, under President Olusha Obasanjo, where governors were uh, taken out of office and a solar administrator appointed, but a situation whereby basic fundamental human rights are restricted to ensure that the security can deal with these things. Because people cannot hold people to ransom. 
kill, evade people's homes, and still. kill, maim, and it is becoming ceaseless. Well, Bio, I, I mean, there's, there's no question about it that uh, one of the biggest stories of the weekend was the abduction yet again yes. of uh, students in, the, in, in their boarding uh, houses. Uh, we saw what happened a little over six years ago now with, with the Chibok uh, schoolgirls. That was in 2014, April 2014. And then we saw what happened two years ago uh, with uh, almost going to three years now. Dabchi, Dabchi that's in Yobe. Uh, and now we are seeing this one in Katsina. That's to say from the northeast to the northwest. Uh, is it Boko Haram that is operating? Uh, are they bandits who are kidnapping persons for ransom? But whatever it is, there is something about, uh, the, the, shall we say, the Nigerian elite. I just wanted to almost say, you know, our, our governance uh, our attitude. It's, we keep talking about intelligence gathering, utilization of intelligence, and so on and so forth. The invaders of the school in Kankara they didn't come in, in, in single numbers. They came in a team. So which means that they must have had prior planning. And prior planning would also have included prior communication. So there was no interception of, of their communication, no interception of their plans. Uh, to say we're going to strike at such an hour. And indeed, they struck at such an hour. Yes, you might then say that yeah, they were repelled because you had police protection for the pupils and the, and the school. But was that number sufficient? Uh, in some cases, from what we find elsewhere, is that law enforcement is one step ahead of the so-called bad guys. And even when the bad guys outpace the law enforcement agencies, the law enforcement agencies have reinforcement which bandits and armed robbers and kidnappers don't necessarily have. So where was the backup? These are the kind of questions you keep asking. And sometimes you just say, because there's very little we can discuss about security issues on air. Uh, but we can't possibly be reacting, reacting, and reacting. Uh, it's yet we have seen several reports and accounts of the military taking out bandits in their various camps, particularly the Air Force strafing their camps and, and, and positions. But again, this, the so-called human intelligence to say, look, these persons are planning. Uh, the school is it's not as if you had maybe 100 or 50 odd pupils. 800. 800. How did they move them? A well, well, some of them, scamp a number of them scampered, you yes. know, once there was an exit of gunfire. But for any person to say, we want to strike at this location, they must be audacious in the first instance. And they must have been doing it for a while. They must have also had their recognizance. They, so, they actually indicated they were coming at 6 o'clock. They didn't come at 6 o'clock. They came at 9 p.m. They indicated they to indicated, the school authorities. They indicated to Kankara town yes. they were coming at 6 o'clock. That is part of the report. To the schools coming. or the town? No, to, the to the Kankara town. So, and then, of course, the school is in Kankara too. Was there no security alert? Well, to usually the security at the college was there, and he did the best he could by engaging them. It was the exchange of fire between him and the bandits who came on motorcycle that alerted the student and many of them run to safety out of, out of the college. Well, the other story that is also catching attention is that uh, the military high command has indicated that uh, some of these officers have tested uh, uh, positive to COVID-19. And that is very worrying because already uh, the 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 relations of the late general of the GOC 6th uh, Division who died are already raising alarm that two weeks ago he was at home to bury his mother and all was well and they all of a sudden they had that he took ill and he died mm. and nobody dies of COVID-19 in such a short time. But the army has come out to pr provide details that a week before the conference he had actually presented himself at the, at the hospital where he was treated for malaria or something of that nature. Mm. And uh, among the tests that was directed to be conducted was COVID-19 test. And also, as a prelude to the conference, upon his arrival, he had visited many of his colleagues yes. in their homes. And apparently, it's a consequence of that that many of the officers who are attending the conference have now tested positive. positive. So, uh, the other story, uh, which is also very worrying, is COVID-19. 
The Secretary mm. of the Government of the Federation has gone in isolation, not because he is positive. He and his wife tested negative, but he's following the COVID-19 protocol because one of person in his household has tested positive. Similarly, over the weekend, Governor Saulu first went into isolation because an aide has tested positive, but by uh, Sunday, he has tested positive too. too. Governor Erufai has gone into isolation because a family member and an aide have tested positive. He uh, tested for COVID-19 yesterday. We are waiting the outcome of result. But what does this, this all tell us? It tells us that, again, COVID-19 is here and is gaining great ascendancy. And we need to go back to observe all the pharmaceutical uh, precautions. No, Bio, you keep and Christmas is just a Bio, Bio, you keep saying pharmaceutical. <laughs> Non-pharmaceutical, non -pharma non -pharma <laughs> yes. And Christmas right. is just around the corner, Bio. Yes. You know, and people are traveling. Community transmission will be very high. Yes. Well, people don't take precautions. That's that's going to be the consequence. I went to Nigeria and there was no, actually, nobody wearing masks. <laughs> and I, I sort of okay, well, you know, I used it for some days. And I, I tell you, you are talking about my dude. Like, Even here in Abuja, yeah. when I go out, I wear masks. People tend to look at me. Where is this strange guy coming yeah, from? A funny creature. Yes, that's that's bio. Well, I, this year has uh, has been one of several obituaries for key media players. Uh, Bayo? Yes. Uh, on Friday night, Samunda Azaya, publisher of Leadership Newspaper, passed away. You can see it yes. on the front page there of the Leadership. The tributes are still pouring in pouring for him. In. Uh, earlier in the year, we also had a number of very prominent uh, media persons or persons affiliated to the media who passed away. Chief of Staff to the President, Abba Kari, you know, if you recall, had uh, some years of experience uh, in the media industry yes. before yes. he went to banking. Mm -hmm. Of course, he'd been with New Nigerian. He also mm -hmm. was on the editorial board of, of This Day newspaper and others. Uh, then uh, Issa Funtua, mm. a publisher. Samala, Issa Funtua, yes. yes. Publisher. And both of them were at the burial of Abakari, uh, I saw the picture uh, yesterday. Of, of them, yes. yeah, unfortunately, yeah. It, uh, it's, it's Funtua mm. was publisher of Democrats, yeah. and of course, it was for a long while president and later patron of the Newspaper Proprietors Association of Nigeria. Wada Maida was um, yeah. chairman of News Agents of Nigeria at the time of his death. Yes, well, managing Had also director. been, of yes. course, mm. for many years, managing director. Mm of uh, News Agency of Nigeria. The structure of News Agency of Nigeria here in the capital city uh, was one that was uh, raised under his tenure. Uh, he was a very formidable journalist, 70 years old. Uh, this is the, and now Samuda Azaya. 58. Uh, uh, no, Samuda Azaya is 58. Is Bolabo Ogunsonwo. Bolabo Ogunsonwo, another columnist. Like Isani Kasina. Uh, mm. Yeah, absolutely. So you just go on and on. Oh. There are other persons, Ima Okocha, Ima Okocha was a formidable uh, writer on, uh, on sports. Yes. Uh, he also published The Blood of the Niger. He actually studied mass communication at the University of Nigeria, graduated in 1977, mm. passed away in Asaba just you know, a couple of days before mm. his formal investiture as he came back mm. of, uh, of Asaba. And there are other persons. I mean, we have a, new ca a newscaster who passed away in Port Harcourt. Yeah. Uh, same and uh, Wan Kaudu, former journalist with The Guardian who was uh, special assistant to uh, Governor Yeson Wike okay. also passed away suddenly. So uh, it's been uh, not quite, you know, a pleasant year yeah, for in, the, in terms the media, of, yes. of, of media personnel. May their souls continue to rest in peace. Amen, amen, amen. Bayo, I would like to thank you, uh, thank you for too. being around today. I will see you again tomorrow. All right, it's Good Morning Nigeria still on NTS Network Service. We're taking a short break now. When we return, we'll be dealing with the plans by state governments to borrow from pension funds. What are the issues? What are the consequences? The Council of Our Fathers. I will urge and advise our younger generation to use talent and brain to sort out problems, not uh, arms. Nigerian youths, let's build our nation together. It's a season of smiles on our faces with LifeMate Furniture's 48% discount on all products, 20% discount on Royal products, and 30% discount on VMate electrical appliances. From the 27th November to 20th December, treat your loved ones and win cars, 
refrigerators, TV, and electric motorcycles. So hurry and buy Life Made Furniture to win great gifts and raffle tickets. Prepare for the raffle draw on the 19th of December 2020, 1 p.m. at Chika Mba Close, Leki Ekbe Expressway, Osapa Village, Lagos, Nigeria. Follow on Facebook at Life Made Furniture to win beautiful toys and call 081 2000 6000 for more. Celebrate your Christmas with love and all Life Made Furniture shows. Happy holidays from Life Made Furniture. Life Made making your life better in my house we may look alike but we are very different individuals <laughs> my adorable twins hmm they look so alike but they don't like wearing the same things and my little man <laughs> i had to find out the hard way because i've been trying to teach him my way he loves to learn his own way because doing things his way is more fulfilling Everybody believes their way is best. That's why Golden Penny Pasta is our favorite meal because due to its non-stickiness, it allows me to satisfy everybody just the way they want it. Golden Penny Pasta, made with durum wheat, is tasty, nutritious, a source of protein and fiber, and non-sticky, so you can cook, serve, and eat your pasta just the way you like it. Go on and enjoy your Golden Penny Pasta the way you want it. With Golden Penny Pasta, your way is best. Nigerian youths are about the greatest asset the country has at the moment. It is therefore not surprising that the administration of President Mamad Buhari is strategically responding to the yearnings of the youth through multiple projects and programs. Youth Entrepreneurship Support Years by Bank of Industry, the Youth Investment Fund by the CBN, and several other conditional cash transfer programs. Recruitment of 774,000 social workers, majority of whom are youths, and so many other projects that are beneficial to youths directly or indirectly. If the administration can do all this, definitely, with a degree of patience and time, it can achieve more. Nigerian youths must come together to say no to terrorism, no to vandalism, and no to all disruptive tendencies. Hashtag Youth for Greater Nigeria, pacifying the youths, unifying the nation. These days, people get their news and information for more media sources than ever before. Some of the news and information given are fake, unverified, doctored, and manufactured to create confusion, stir disaffection, and cause disunity. Before you believe or share any news, ask yourself, is this real? Is it from a credible source? Is it verified or verifiable? Fake news is dangerous. Whether you do it for fun or for political gains, real people can get hurt. Fake news. Don't create it. Don't spread it. This is a public service announcement from NTA. Do you know that 35% of every girl, child and women are raped on a daily basis? Some are killed in the process. Some take their lives in shame. Others remain emotionally dead for life. It is sad. This culture is not art, definitely not African. How did we allow bad culture to infiltrate and take over? Even if you lack fear for the law, what of fear of God? And you, why do you cover up rape acts when it happens? Remember, a problem share is a problem half solved. Never cover any rape act because a rapist is a murderer. It could be you or your loved ones next. Women must be treated like the prize gen they are. Say no to rape. It's good morning, Nigeria. Still on NTS Network Service. Now, as a background to our conversation, which is on state government's plan to borrow from pension funds, let's listen in to our correspondent, Aisha Obali. After working for many years, there is always a retirement day, and most retirees look forward to accessing their savings they made while in active service. 
The government has a poll where this fund is kept for the payment of retirees, but recently there has been ongoing debate about the state government's plan to borrow from this fund to execute infrastructural projects. The Nigerian Governors Forum endorsed two proposals to borrow a total of 17 trillion naira from two sources for infrastructural development. One of the sources is said to be the National Pension Fund. Figures obtained from the National Pension Commission on Friday last week showed that the total funds under the scheme stood at 11.34 trillion naira as of the end of August, out of which 7.5 trillion naira had been invested in federal government securities. The Pension Reform Act, however, stipulates that the fund should not be released by the pension fund custodians to the pension fund administrators to be administered as, to be administered as loans or put in other investments, except it is in line with the investment guidelines of the National Pension Commission. Is there anything wrong in borrowing from the pension purse? And 18 states are yet to implement. And these are the same people saying that they want to now borrow our pension money. In fact, not less than 5% of the states have key into the contributory pension. Yet they want to borrow the money. Both of the money is federal government workers and private sector workers. So how do you want to borrow? from where you have not sold. It's not free money. The position is very clear. States are not taking pension funds. Pension funds are not under the control of states. In the first instance, pension funds in Nigeria today does not have in its kitty anything close to 17 trillion. They don't even have 10 trillion. So how can you take what is not there? But what we did at the National Economic Council which is made up of federal and states, chaired by His Excellency the Vice President. We were racking our brain in the heat of COVID, recession, everything. States are not just in the business of paying salaries. How do we meet the other needs of the over 90% of our population that do not earn civil service salary, teacher salary, uh, health worker salary. So what, what? The Social Economic Rights and Accountability Project, SIRAP, argues that such proposed borrowing will be detrimental to the interests of the beneficiaries of the funds. And also the main beneficiaries, the pensioners, have also kicked against this move through the Nigerian Union of Pensioners. What is the implication of borrowing from the pension fund? Is such a move in accordance with the law? Guests on Good Morning Nigeria will give their perspectives shortly. And to discuss the topic, first I would like to introduce here in the studio in Abuja, Ahmed Abubakar Tanimu Esquire, a former banker, now human rights activist and private legal practitioner. Many thanks for joining us. Thank you for having me. And joining us from our Kaduna studio is Shaibu Idris, a financial analyst. You're welcome to Good Morning Nigeria. Thank you, Jumai. Good morning, Nigerians. All right, and then we also have two guests who are joining us uh, via Zoom from uh, different locations in Lagos. Uh, first, we'd like to welcome the Deputy Director of Social Economic Rights and Accountability Project, Sherab. He's Kola Wole Oluwadare. Uh, Mr. Oluwadare, pleasure to have you. Uh, well, I understand that uh, his, uh, his Zoom has uh, just gone off, mm -hmm. so we're trying to reconnect with him. Uh, but we also have from Lagos, uh, Ivo Taco. Ivo Taco is a lawyer and a uh, former national treasurer of the Nigeria Labor Congress and also a former board member of the National Pension Commission. It's a consultant on pension matters. Ivo Taco, delighted to have you with us on the program this morning. Thank you. Good morning, Nigeria. <laughs> And just for us to also indicate that uh, we had expected the National uh, Pension Commission uh, to join us for the uh, conversation this morning. Uh, we're still awaiting their arrival. Uh, if they will join us, then, of course, we'll have their own perspective on this issue. But uh, happily, uh, Ivo uh, Taco is, uh, is here, as I said, a former member of the board of the National Pension uh, Commission, which has an oversight over the activities of, of the board. Uh, Taco, beginning with you, we have heard from the Nigeria Labor Congress, you saw them in a clip a while ago. We've also heard from the National Union of Pensioners threatening that they could go spiritual if the state governments were to go ahead and borrow pension funds. 
And going spiritual probably also includes going the native way. <laughs> and Serap itself has also thrown his heart into the ring by becoming part of the fray. From your own perspective, is this a storm in the teacup or it's some real concern about a threat to accumulated pensions and therefore the rights of pensioners to draw upon their pensions when the time comes? Thank you. I think um, the concerns of Nigerian workers and especially those of pensioners are real because, uh, but let me clear this thing. As a former board member of PENCOM and one of those who was a member of the Committee of Pension Reform in Nigeria, I want to say that the act does not envisage borrowing from the pension fund, it, it envisages investment. And I believe that is what PENCOM and the operators are doing. Having said that, the workers have real concern about their pension fund. In the first instance, those funds in the RS retirement savings account are not guaranteed by government. They are there at the pleasure of investment and the security lies in investment and whatever it is. And of course, uh, the risk profiling and investment uh, management of PENCOM and the operators. Having said that, workers, including myself, as a retiree under the contributory pension scheme, will be worried if anything is done to affect our fund negatively. Having said that, I want to say that, just like it has been said, governors, more than uh, more than 90% of state governments have not keyed into the contributory pension fund. And so they have no right, moral or legal, to be talking about pension fund whether for infrastructural development or whatever purpose they want to apply them. They should put their mouth where their pockets are. Even if it is legally, they have a valid instrument to invest in pension fund. Morally, they have no right because those are contributions under pension funds, which majority of them have not keyed into. If they want to key into it, they should first and foremost go and key into the contributory pension scheme. Okay, Barista Ivo Taco, you know, earlier when we were discussing here in the studio with um, Tanimo, he actually said that it is okay for the governors to, you know, take from the pension fund. How is that possible when people save money and it's used to pay them their, their salaries again? Mr. Ivo? Sorry, I didn't get that very clearly. Yes, earlier when we were discussing in the studio before we got we started this discussion, you know, Barry Setenimo said when I asked him, is it okay for state governments to, you know, take from the pension fund? He said it is okay. Is it actually okay? Well, it is okay to the extent that they follow the legal procedure for investing in pension fund. I think there is a distinction between taking and investing. If they have, if the state governments, let me repeat this, those that have keyed into the contributory pension fund, if, if they have viable instruments approved by PENCOM for investment of pension fund in whatsoever thing, whether infrastructure or whatsoever, then it is okay to invest pension funds into them. Because in the first place, pension fund, what comes to the contributor are the contributions of the employer, the contributions of the employee, and the return of investment thereof. It is the return of investment that grows the pension scheme. Without investment, the pension scheme cannot grow. However, at is, at, it is known, and PENCOM has also said it, PENCOM has a right to approve investment. The Act gives pension 
the right to give guidelines for investment of pension scheme. And there are also instruments that have been approved for investment of the scheme. If, if that is the path the governors want to take to get pension funds invest, in, it is okay. But from, there is nowhere. I think it is just a matter of speculation. Nobody can borrow from pension funds following due process. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, th thank you very much, um, Ivor Taco. I, I want to bring in uh, Shwaibu Idris here, yeah, a financial analyst, uh, one of our uh, regular uh, guests whenever we're discussing economic and financial matters. He'd been, of course, in the uh, banking sector for many years. Uh, Shwaibu Idris, for the benefit of uh, some of our viewers, I would like you to clarify the two terms, which are obviously uh, mutually exclusive, that uh, Ivor Taco used. Ivor Taco says, look, in effect, the pension fund doesn't act as a lender. In other words, you cannot go and borrow from it, but rather it serves as an investor. So what is the distinction between lending and then also investing in the context of which we are having this conversation? Thank you very much for that question. Once again, good morning, Nigerians. Uh, before I, I go to your question, I'd like to make a bit of clarification uh, regarding what uh, Barrister Taco uh, has said. Uh, number one, there are subsisting rules and regulations regarding investment by trustees and trust funds. Uh, this country has, has have had uh, Trustees Investment Act, which guides anybody investing on behalf of somebody. Number two, I think we must categorically segregate the two issues, contribution to the fund or to a fund, which uh, he said almost 90% or 99% of uh, state governors or state governments have not keyed into the contributory pension scheme. Therefore, they should not reap where they didn't sow. Or uh, since they are not contributing, why should they borrow? I, I think we must segregate the issues into two. 